have been fighting all year to stamp out voter fraud. Because if even one fraudster shows up at the polls in November, that would tarnish the integrity of an election that the Koch brothers paid good money for. Voters will now be required to show an ID at the polls. A suppression tactic to undermine the right The to impact vote. will be felt most heavily among the poor, the elderly, minorities. They hit students extra hard. A push to make it as difficult as possible to it vote. It disenfranchises a whole sector of the American electorate. The Koch brothers are behind these kinds of laws because they want to cut off the participation of people who are not behind their corporate agenda. The people most impacted by these new voter suppression tactics are African Americans, Latinos, elderly, young voters, and those with disabilities. There are three ways the Koch brothers are working to suppress the vote. Number one, ALEC. ALEC stands for the American Legislative Exchange Council. This is an establishment that brings high-powered organizations like Koch companies, the NRA, and ExxonMobil, together with politicians for the express purpose of creating legislation that favor the corporations that fund ALEC. ALEC supervises and guides the writing of the legislation. Once they have the language of the legislation, they work tirelessly to get the bill introduced into as many states and counties as possible using the ALEC money and connections. One bill fits all. Number two, Americans for Prosperity and True the Vote. Koch-funded Americans for Prosperity supports a number of voter suppression groups and campaigns across the country. One of the largest and most vocal is called True the Vote. True the Vote has enlisted and trained an army of citizen volunteers. They are planning to station one million poll watchers across the country on election day. True the Vote is the first line of defense uh, for free and fair elections. True the Vote opened my eyes to a problem that has been left unaddressed. True the Vote is a citizen-led effort to ensure free and fair elections. The problem, critics say, is that those poll watchers are mostly white, and many of the polling places they will target are mostly black. They are trying to find any and everything to stop the citizens from voting. And number three, politicians. Protecting the integrity of each and every vote cast in the state. This voter ID bill, including Voter ID. Voter ID. Common sense voter ID law. Get those IDs in people's hands. Photo ID requirement for every voter. These kinds of efforts are reminiscent of a much darker period in American history, when there were efforts to prohibit people from voting, particularly in the segregated South. This is the resurrection of those voter suppression efforts, and there certainly hasn't been this kind of money or this kind of organization behind them in a very long time. First at Kennedy, that's when I started voting. And then from then on, I've always voted. I'm gonna miss this one though, because I don't have nothing to, no, I don't have any ID. I, somebody stole my pocketbook. Her purse was stolen eight years ago, along with her birth certificate, and she says she can't get an ID. It's just such a kick in the teeth to old people, particularly who have been voting as long as, or darn near as long as I have. There is a glitch on my birth certificate. And I did register almost immediately upon my 21st birthday. That was 59 years ago. I have voted in every single election since then. I would have considerable difficulty getting a state-issued ID, and I would like to continue voting. I think it's my right. They told me at the uh, voter registration office I had to bring in proof of my disability check, proof of my social security check, and proof of my uh, handicap ID card. Why did I have to bring this? I never needed it before. The notion that we need this to prevent voter fraud isn't a good faith mistake, it's a lie. It is a way of disenfranchisement of certain segments of our society. So this is a poll tax. This is requiring people to pay money to cast a ballot. And I don't think we want that in this country. Born at home in the segregated South, she's never had a birth certificate. My grandmother, she insisted never, never miss a voting day. I won't have no rights if I can't vote. 93-year-old Viviette Applewhite is the lead plaintiff in the ACLU's case over the voter ID law. I think it's a terrible law to make people not be able to vote because they don't have a piece of paper say ID on it. January 2014, 
a judge ruled that the Pennsylvania voter ID law is unconstitutional, which means that Viviette Applewhite is eligible to vote. Be able to vote. This is all I want to do, is be able to vote. The brothers and their allies are going to spend millions of dollars in these efforts. Citizens who believe in voting and democracy must fight back in all possible ways. Viviette Applewhite was able to hold on to her long-held right to vote because she fought back against the Koch brothers' suppression laws. Joy Lieberman in Missouri also took the issue to court and won. Alberta Curry preserved her record of voting rights of over 50 years because she refused to let her rights be stolen by the bogus voter ID laws backed by the Koch brothers. The reason that you target somebody's voting rights is it makes it easier to take away the rest of their rights. You come for that first and the whole house of cards starts to fall. Why is voting important to me? Because it gives you equal right to do things. That's why it's important.